Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Let's make something clear here. I am a big softy. I love fluffy, adorable stuff, and I love that Yu-Gi-Oh! is a card game that lets the sappy stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with magical cyber knights and dark dragons. Look no further than Medolches and Trickstars for themes that have been legitimate threats in the meta, but also kawaii as hell. So, you'll understand my excitement when leaks dropped for Rise of the Duelist, and one of the new themes was the pastel pasture roamers themselves, Marve. These little critters have a storybook aesthetic that's unique across the entire game, and it works because they all look so heckin' floofy. Like, look at them! Every one of them, without exception, is an absolute fuzzy unit, and I hope they make like little plushies of all of them because I want 20. But I've gotta put the cuteness aside for a bit, otherwise I'll... I don't know, start ranking them by how wonderful they'd be as pets. I wonder if anyone's tried that before. Anyway, gotta focus on what we're actually here for. Let's line up the menagerie, go over all their monsters and support, and then look over some off-theme cards that help the archetype. It's time to analyze Marfe. Well, it'll be time to analyze them in a bit. Just wanted to take a quick moment to say that if you've enjoyed my content so far, please consider subscribing. You'll have my videos delivered to your feed fresh, and it gives me a big dopamine rush every time I see the number go up, so you'll be doing me a lot of good. Okay, now it's time to talk about our little forest friends. Uh, for real. In the main deck, Marfei monsters all share a lot of characteristics. They're all level 2 earth beast monsters, and aside from the one normal monster, all of them can special summon themselves from the hand during your end phase. Though keep in mind it is a hard once per turn, so you can't drop multiple of the same monster in a turn. Now you might be asking, with stats like this, why would you want to drop them onto the field and have them fend for themselves during your opponent's turn? Well, as future cards would suggest, the Marfei are rather playful, but very, very shy. And each has an effect that triggers when your opponent normal or special summons a monster, or when it's targeted for an attack. At this point, they bounce to your hand, then resolve their own unique effect. Let's go over each of them so that we can get a handle on what their contribution is. Let's start with Ratty. They have 0 attack and 2100 defense, whoo golly! They lack an effect, so you won't be able to pull any shenanigans with them, but this does mean that you could run Unexpected Die or Rescue Rabbit to help spam out materials. Uh, more on that in a bit. Kathy has 200 attack and defense. When they bounce, you get to add any beast from your deck to your hand. This essentially acts as a themed searcher, but also allows you to grab any other off-theme monsters that might help. I don't want to tip my hand too soon here, but being able to search Rescue Cat is going to be stellar for ramping up your plays. Fenny has 100 attack and 300 defense. When they're bounced, you can special summon any beast from your hand. This can set up your other Marfei effects, but because of how generic it is, you can mobilize other threats as well. There are some pretty beefy beasts, including Green Baboon of the Forest or Danger Bigfoot. Yeah, you could run some dangers in this, but my favorite application is Surprise Kalantosa! Pony has 400 attack and 0 defense, and when it bounces, you can add a level 2 or lower beast from your graveyard to your hand. The level restriction is likely to keep you from recycling your rescue monsters, but worry not, there are plenty of other options. Aside from getting back Fallen Marfei, you can get back Valerifon for continued graveyard revival, or Hop Ear Squadron for some surprise synchro summons. Last, and probably most important, is Puppy. It has 300 attack and 100 defense and when it bounces, you can special summon any level 2 or lower beast from your deck. Because it summons from deck, it's almost a strictly better version of Kathy and Fenny. It can pull all the same moves as them, but tapers off in usefulness as you assemble your cards. However, it's most certainly a 3 of, as you'll be wanting to resolve this effect early and often. So all this is cute, much like the cards, but what is this building to? What's our win condition? Well, the theme has two Xyz monsters that will show that we're looking to stall things out until we've assembled the perfect one-shot kill. Marfei's of the Forest is a rank 2 Earth Beast Xyz monster with 500 attack and 2000 defense that takes any two level 2 monsters. Once per turn, you can detach a material to add any Marfei card from your deck to your hand. Also once per turn, if another Marfei monster you control returns to your hand, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, and while it's on the field, it can attack and has all of its effects negated. So not only is this going to fix your hand with searches, it also just turns off monsters, making them sit there entranced in the glorious adorableness that is Marfei. And since the Marfei returned to your hand on monster summons, it's not unlikely for you to interrupt an important effect. 
Even in these days of modern Yu-Gi-Oh, where it's easy to link off monsters that aren't doing anything currently, your opponent's usually going to need to resolve the effects of all the monsters along the way. Stopping those can put a big hamper on combo plays and keep them stunned while you build up your forces. Marfei Mommy is also a rank 2 Earth Beast Exceeds monster, this time sporting 1000 attack and defense, and can be made with 2 or more level 2 beasts. As a quick effect, you can attach any beast from your hand or field to them as an Exceeds material, and they gain effects based on how many they have attached. With 3 or more, they can't be destroyed by battle. 4 or more keeps you from taking any battle damage from battles involving her, and with 5 or more, whenever an attack is declared involving Mommy and an opponent's attack position monster, you burn them for the attack of that opponent's monster. Five materials is a lot, admittedly, even if they can absorb material turn after turn. But once it gets going, it goes hard. Suddenly, powerful Link mainstays like Avramax become a liability, not an asset. But this is weird, right? An Xyz monster with no effect that involves detaching material? Yeah, keep that in mind, we'll come back to that. For now, let's take a look at the support. Marfei Hide and Seek is a continuous spell that grants every beast you control immunity to effect destruction the first time it would happen to them per turn, which will help your critters from being picked off in such a way as to keep them from resolving their effects. Also, it works like a Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix, letting you shuffle three beasts with different names from your graveyard into your deck to draw a card. This means that, while Pony won't be getting you any of your bigger beasts directly from the grave, you do now have a way to recycle your utility monsters and exceed bosses. Marfei Tag is a quick play spell that lets you target a Marfei in your graveyard and special summon it. You can only activate one per turn, but other than that, super simple. Summon out a lost Marfei to get their effects online, or get back a Mommy and begin the process of building them back up. I guess since their attacks are so low, they didn't feel the need to provide any other condition to a quick play revival spell, which I'm sure will cause my opponents no end of frustration when I summon out a Kathy for the last 200 points of damage to help close out the game. Our last themed card is Marfei Time, and trust me, when you activate it, your opponent's time is up. On activation, you detach as many Xyz material from as many Beast Xyz monsters you control as you'd like, then target up to the number of cards detached that your opponent controls. On resolution, you bounce all of the targeted cards, then all Beast Xyz monsters you control gain 500 attack for each material detached until the end phase. This acts as kind of a hidden effect for Mommy. You'll stockpile as many Xyz material on them as possible, then cash it all in for what's effectively a board wipe. Detaching 5 material, which they'll hopefully be at, will wipe away just about every threat your opponent has, leaving you with a 3500 attack beater, with even more damage available if you have any other Beast Xyz monsters ready to fight. This should ideally be your game plan. Stun your opponent until you've built up a critical mass of material, flip time, then rush in for the win. So now that we've established what the deck is aiming for, let's look over some existing support that might help. We've mentioned them before, but the rescue monsters are Primo inclusions as a way to speed up your game plan. Cat is undeniably useful for grabbing two Marfays to go right into Forest, Mommy, or any other rank 2 you desire. Rabbit will require some work. I'm not super jazzed about running only a single target like Rabbi. You could run a differently leveled normal monster to gain access to some other plays, but that will require a bit of experimenting. Ferret is the most interesting choice. If you can summon a Link monster with three down arrows, that's three Marfei right there. But unless we get some kind of Marfei Link that specifically enables this, I'm not really sold on it. However, despite Cat being the only rescue that's a 100% include, you can still run Emerging Emergency Rescue Rescue guilt-free, because Puppy has the correct stats to use it. That's right. The two best starters in the deck are searchable off of this card. Now you've just got to find a way to pay some life points, but hey, that's what Perform a Pal Popper Up is for, right? And while we're still in a Rescue Cat related train of thought, adding an X-Saber Air Bellum to your deck means that it's a one card Naturia Beast, and we all know how important negating spells is. You can even give it a bit of protection with Marfei Hide and Seek. Obedient Schooled is a classic starter for low level beast decks like this. It does lock you into beasts, but it does give you access to an immediate Marfei's of the Forest, or a 3 material Mommy. Another great 1 card starter is Nimble Beaver. Normal summon it, summon another beaver, make forest, search a Marfei. No fuss, no muss. A pair of beasts that can fit in as utility monsters is Sea Koala and Tree Otter. I mean, no matter how small the attack of your Marfei are, they'll usually be more than zero, so Koala can act as pseudo-monster removal. 
and Tree Otter just gives you a little extra bang for your boss monster buck. Now, you probably don't need me to tell you that Kalantosa is already a pretty sweet piece of removal that we can leverage for material later, but if you have the time to activate an ignition effect, may I interest you in Wind Up Kitten? Bouncing can be a much more permanent way of dealing with extra deck threats, and it fits all the criteria to be summoned by Puppy or recycled with Pony. And speaking of non-destruction removal, not many decks can run Super Rush recklessly, but it's a heck of a way to remove a monster. By destroying one of your beasts, you shuffle an opponent's monster back into the deck. A minus one, certainly, but it's a quick way to remove a threat without relying on a lot of other setup. And shuffling a monster back into the deck is a pretty definitive way to get rid of it. Marfei Tag might let you revive any Marfei at quick effect speed, but how about a normal spell that can summon any beast? Not only does Ayer's Rock Sunrise have a wider range of monsters that it can revive, it also debuffs all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls at the time of resolution by 200 for each beast, plant, and wing beast in your grave until the end of the turn, giving you a window to retaliate against bigger threats. But what are some other extra deck monsters we can rely on? Are we stuck using only Forest and Mommy to make our plays? Well, much to my surprise, the rank 2 options in this deck are surprisingly robust. An old raccoon staple has been number 64, Ronin Raccoon Sandeyu. This tenacious tanuki can make tokens that can be used as link material, or as Astral intended, crash the ever loving snot out of the monsters whose attack it copied. Or, bonus tip, you can copy the attack of a Marfei time boosted monster so you have something that will keep the attack boost permanently. Mannequin Cat has some. surprisingly good synergy here. Reviving an opponent's monster usually sucks, especially if it's not done right, but on top of looking to trigger your own summon off of her other effect, you can summon a huge monster to your opponent's side of the field, and then attack it with a 5 material mommy to trigger a lot of burn damage. Also, being base 2000 and a beast means that they'll benefit greatly from Marfei time. Crumble logos can be used to turn off some floodgates, and base 2200 attack ain't too shabby. Unfortunately, it's not a quick effect so you can't use it in response to said floodgates being activated, but it can also bait out powerful boss effects, because if Logos takes hold, they're not going to get another chance to use it. The Phantom Knights of Cursed Javelin has the ability to deal with a wide range of monsters. If it can be targeted, you can blank its attack and its effect text to run over it. Shame that you'll likely never get the quick effect, but eh, that's just how it be sometimes. Another rank 2 problem solver is Sky Cavalry Centauria. If the monster you're looking to remove can't be targeted, you can smash into it with Centauria and send it packing from wherever it came from. And 2000 attack ain't bad. The last two things I wanted to bring up were potential other themes that you could splash with Marfei that might have some synergy. The first one is Ojamas. No, please don't click off right now, I'm being mostly serious here. See, Marfei don't have a field spell, but Ojamas do. And while Mommy won't see much of a change, Forest goes up to 2,000 attack under the effect of Ojama Country. Also, Rescue Ferret becomes a whole lot better because Ojama Emperor has the exact link arrows that we're looking for. Beyond that, okay, admittedly there isn't a lot of synergy there. The rest of the Ojama cards just so happen to be level 2 beasts, but I still think it's worth experimenting with. It'd be a pretty hilarious build, right? Ojamas and Marfays, the dream meme. Now, my more serious suggestion is Paleozoic. Remember, our game plan is to stun our opponent out while we accrue advantage, and I can't think of a better way than with Dust Tornadoes, Karma Cuts, and Book of Moons that become monsters. The best part is that, with the exception of Mommy, the Xyz requirements for all of your bosses are just level 2 monsters. And while the Paleos will need at least one trap material to function at their best, that doesn't mean that we can't supplement the rest of the material with Marfei. Plus, this gives you a way to beat Mystic Mine in the main, and everyone loves that. And that's all the thoughts I have on Marfei. Do you have any cards or ideas that you feel would power up this pack of plucky plushy pals? Let me know in the comments, and a huge shout out to Third World Yu-Gi-Oh! They made a video about which danger makes the best pet that I referenced in the preamble. It's jolly good fun, so give it a watch, and show them your support if you enjoy their stuff. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye